everyone, my name is Dylan and I'm a customer support engineer here at MTI Instruments. In this video, we're going to look at some of the basics regarding aircraft vibration analysis and engine balancing. This includes what usually causes vibrations in aircraft, the effects of vibration, the ways we can measure it, and ultimately, methods we have to reduce it. Airplanes are incredibly complex machines. They can have thousands of moving parts, many of which, even when working as designed, can contribute to the vibration that can be detected on an aircraft. These vibrations can include blade and propeller aerodynamic imbalances, worn components, imperfections of bearing surfaces, and cracked and broken airframe components. And even though modern vibration analysis equipment is capable of identifying almost any cause of vibration, including those just mentioned, for the purposes of this video, we're going to focus on another major cause of airframe vibration, turbine and compressor mass imbalances. This type of imbalance can be addressed through the use of any trim balance procedure offered by many electronic balancing machines. However, before we look at balancing this problem, let's first look at what a turbine and compressor imbalance actually is. In an ideal world, we have the center of mass of the rotor, where we assume all of the weight is centered, colored in red in this diagram, located on the axis of rotation, colored in blue. In this case, there's no imbalance in the system, and therefore no vibration caused by a non-centered center of mass. However, we don't live in an ideal world. Very rarely are the center of mass and axis of rotation co-located together. Instead, in practice, we find that most rotating mechanical systems have a distance between the center of mass and the axis of rotation. When this happens, a rotating system demonstrates what we identify as a wobble as it rotates. We can sense this wobble mechanically as a vibration. If we freeze the rotor for a second, we get this picture. The center of mass is not co-located with the axis of rotation, so we know that this rotor will experience some magnitude of wobble and generate a vibration that we can use. This wobble is caused by the inertia of the center of mass. In this moment, the instantaneous velocity of the center of mass is in the downward direction, and just like myself in the morning trying to get out of bed, a mass, myself, tends to resist a change unless acted on by an outside force, in this case, my alarm clock. So the center of mass will want to continue downwards. However, the rotor is spinning and will therefore apply a force to the center of mass to keep it rotating about the axis of rotation. If the rotor is on a stiff axis, then the axis will resist the inertial force from the center of mass. Most systems, however, have play about their axis. This can be caused by things like flex in the axis shaft, play in the bearings, etc. If we assume that the shaft in our example is flexible, this figure shows what would happen. The initial force of the center of mass would deflect the shaft downwards, while the rotor's motion would move the center of mass around the axis of rotation. This inertial force continues to follow the center of mass around the rotor, causing the shaft to flex with the imbalance as it spins. Now that we know what a vibration is and what can cause them, we need to ask, why bother dealing with it? Aircraft are designed to withstand a certain amount of vibration, but no matter the magnitude of the vibrations, they can wear down the structure of the airframe. Vibrations can cause fluid fittings to pop loose, causing oil and hydraulic leaks. Structural fatigue can set in, which can be seen in things such as smoking rivets. The vibration can also cause the entire airframe to resonate, resulting in an uncomfortable ride for passengers and pilots, not to mention how much louder an aircraft is when there's significant vibrations. From an economic standpoint, it takes energy to create a vibration. In an aircraft, that energy can only come from one place, from the engine and the fuel we burn. So, instead of that energy from the fuel being used to move the aircraft forward, it's being wasted on creating nuisance vibrations that can slowly impact the structure of the airframe. We have multiple ways to measure a vibration, but we normally use accelerometers that send the vibration signal via a charge output via a piezoelectric crystal, similar to the one found in many watches. This generates a charge signal. We can also use velocity and displacement sensors to measure vibration, although it's rare to see these types of sensors these days. 
If an accelerometer is used to measure the vibration, it's usually required that we also use a charge amplifier that can take the very small charge signal generated by the accelerometer and amplify it into a usable signal. With the various ways to measure a vibration, the units that we report the magnitude of a vibration in can also be in terms of an acceleration, a velocity, or a displacement. For example, we could say that a displacement caused by a vibration is equal to one millimeter. It's also acceptable to say that a vibration has an amplitude of one inch per second, or an acceleration of two Gs. So what is a bad vibration? Well, that's a tough question to answer. The FAA makes clear in the Federal Aviation Regulations that a manufacturer must demonstrate that the engine and its components are free from what they call excessive vibration. What do they mean by excessive vibration? Well, the FAA is kind enough to elaborate. Vibrations that result in a mechanical failure, damage, or wear in excess of approved limits are prevents the engine from operating as intended. Well, this makes sense. We don't want vibrations interfering with the operations of the aircraft. But a more likely reason we consider a vibration unacceptable is simply the fact that it's uncomfortable for pilots and passengers. Because of this, there's no hard and set definition of a bad vibration. Each manufacturer can specify a unique magnitude that's considered unacceptable, and some operators might take action simply when pilots or passengers complain. So what if we have a vibration that needs to be resolved? How do we fix it? Well, if we're dealing with worn or broken components, the answer is simple. We have to repair or replace the broken component, though this can usually be uh, said easier than done. A bad component can be tough to replace and even more expensive to fix. But if we're dealing with a rotor or propeller imbalance problem, then we can likely use a trim balancing procedure to deal with the problem. To reduce a rotor vibration through a trim balance, it's our goal to place weights around the rotor such that the center of mass is drawn towards the axis of rotation. Modern computerized balancing systems are capable of creating balance solutions based off of previous engine run data and will create unique solutions that can handle limited availability of certain weights in hole locations. Furthermore, new systems can provide you with balance reports throughout the process, letting you know exactly how good the balance was at dealing with the imbalance problem.